Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel, Yunus Shafi is here and in this video we are going to learn about Kotlin delegates. Let's get started. First of all, let's start with delegation. What is delegation? Well, you have the internet connection, just type delegation design pattern. So this is a design pattern, okay, and also effective Java by Joshua Blosh. Joshua Blosh, this book, this is an amazing book, it talks about it. It talks about it in an item called Favor, item 18, Favor Composition Over Inheritance. So this pattern is a great pattern to solve the problem and allow object composition to achieve the same thing called reuse as inheritance. This is the main idea. And it also enables to decouple the delegatee from the delegator. That's also an important concept to put in your mind. So what does it mean delegation? Let's say that I'm having this Kotlin example here. I'm having a class called rectangle, all right? And it contains some areas. And let's say I'm having a window in which the bounds are rectangle. So to get the area of this window, we are just delegating the process of getting the area of this rectangle. That's simple. We are just delegating the work to something with someone else. Why this is important? Because sometimes we tend to do this one by using inheritance. Like we can do the following. Let's just copy the same example. And let's put it here. I'm having this too. Sometimes we want to get the same example using this one. I will delete it and I will get from rectangle it just put something here open and just for the sake of the example i will put like 100 and 100 usually we put it here and we can do the following like getting the area directly now there is a problem here there is a problem area of and i put the area so here we are delegating calculating the area to the rectangle but we are doing it through what through inheritance the delegation property or the delegation design pattern is trying to do this one, but using composition. What is composition? It's like we are using the rectangle inside the window as a member variable. This is simply what is delegation. And in the book, Always Effective Java by Joshua Bloch, this is an amazing book, always in the item 18. It talks about why inheritance violates encapsulation, and it shows an example, a great example of set and what, what can go wrong. This is an awesome read to see what are the potential of delegation properties. And also this delegation concept is used through many design patterns. For example, if you read the design pattern book by the Gang of Four, you will see that they are using this in the decorator pattern, for example. So that's a great concept to understand. Why you are talking about that in the realm of Kotlin? Because Kotlin support delegation natively. We will see an example for that. If you want to have an area like that, if you want to have an area, let's say, let's just say the following. I will delete this one. So we are depending directly on the rectangle. That's an issue. What you can do with delegation is like following. You can have like an interface, sorry, called shape. And within that interface, we can have an area like that. And it will give us, for example, an X. Awesome. Now we can put the function here, shape, like that. And we do an override here. And it can work directly like that. What we can do right now is that we can delete this one, okay? And we can have a generic method in here in the shape, sorry. And what we can do is like using the by keyword, this is for the delegation, by this bounds, like that. So here we are implementing that interface, this interface for the area, using the delegation properties of this one. If you want to see, for example, what this code means, what this code means, go here to the tools, Kotlin, and search for Kotlin bytecode, decompile it, and see. So what will happen is the following. You will see a window here, a window, implement a shape. It contains this one, this is the composition, and it uses this one, it uses this one. Let me get the, get the bounds, okay, let's get the bounds, but we're talking about the area, it's using this one. So this is the delegation. This is what is happening at the hood. So using this kind of thing by, we are delegating the calculation of the window area to the bounds which we are composing our, our window. So this is a great pattern to understand and great to see that Kotlin support this natively. So this is just a matter of simplifying our code, right? We are using this just to simplify our code. Put that in mind. The by keyword is also used on delegating properties, okay? So previously we talked about lazy, lazy chapter or the lazy thing, like you can have a val and let's say a string and we do it by lazy, this one. And for example, we are returning the last line with this. Like we are, we try to compute things and we do it. Now this by is referring to setting the properties of this string 
using the lazy block. If you go to the lazy block, you will see many things. So what's happening here is that we are trying to get the value. This is the value. And to get the value of the lazy, first of all, we are checking if it is initialized and so on. And then we do the synchronized. This is the synchronized part. And using this block, where it's block the initializer, this is the initializer, here is the initializer, we are trying to compute it. If it is not initialized and you are using it just when initializing. So we are delegating, initializing the value using the delegation pattern here. So this is a way to delegate things. That's one thing. That was for the lazy part. Now there is some other blocks for building those. Let me check this one, let me delete this too. Now there is other thing like there is by delegates here, you will see multiple things like this, not null, for example. This not null, if you go here to the commutation, you will say return property delegate for read and write property with a non null value that is initialized, not during the object construction, but at later. So if you attempt to use it, like if you use a string directly here without, I mean, without initializing it, you will have an exception running here. But you, if you do it like following, like you can initialize thing here, as you can see, property string should be initialized before again. If you initialize something here, it can work. Like you have, you have to delete this one. It will work. Awesome. This is for delegation, not null. Now there is something else called observable. This one is pretty awesome. Like you can give it an initial value, like for example, hello. And whenever you change, it will trigger a lambda. So the lambda is like following. You should give it property. You can do it like following. Let me put that below. Now here, whenever we are setting this string, we will trigger this lambda. This lambda, you can do whatever you want. Like for example, if the old value changed to a specific new value, you can trigger a process, it doesn't matter. Simply we will just print those here, like the old value, the new value, every time. So basically if you do it like multiple times, now without printing any of those, we will get the prints because we are changing it. First of all, it will print the A, the hello, and the AAA. Why? Because it's changed. Then we will change it. So this is the old value, the new value old value and new value. So the benefit of using delegation with observable like, like this one is that you will get the lot. There is another one called v 2 So this will allow for something interesting. Let's first initialize it. First, you'll give it an initial value, like for example, 15, and then you will give it the condition at the end. Let me check here what you can do. Property, old value, new value, like following. And you should give it like a condition. Now here's a string, for example. Here is a string, let's just rename it to a number. And let me delete those. What this allow you to do, if you go here to the documentation, return property, read and write property that calls specified callback function will change. Allowing the callback to veto, this is the name for veto one, for veto to do the modification. It means that we won't assign any number below five. Let me just try that, print what is in the number. If you do the first print, it is 15. Then if you try to assign it with like, for example, four, it won't work. Let me just print it with after it. It will still 15. If you try to do it with 17, you will get 15. Then if you try to put the four here, this callback will get tricked and you have to put the condition here at the end. So if the condition is valid, if the condition is valid, it will, it will what? It will assign it. Otherwise it won't. So here the four, it will return false here. So it won't put the four inside. It. That's why we are getting 15. Then here it will work, so we will be putting 17. You can basically do something like new value bigger than the old value. It means that every time you assign this variable, you have to assign it with something bigger, all right? Otherwise it won't work. So this is basically for brittle, observable, not null, and lazy. And also the, the specific part in the beginning. As I said, these books are awesome to read, like design pattern. This is an awesome book, awesome read book. Also this effective job. Effective job is great. It contains, as I said, some principles, not just related to Java, but multiple principles. So this is it for this video. I hope you understand how delegation properties and delegation concepts work in general. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video. Assalamualaikum.